Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. <laughs> Let me have my moment, okay? Let me have my moment. Today, I'm excited because this is a first. I got to interview someone who I'm on a show with currently. Today, you are going to meet Gail Bean. Many of you already know her. If you're a fan of Snowfall, the show I'm on, right? If you are a fan of Snowfall, you know her as Wanda Bell. She's the around the way girl turned drug addict. Now, as of season five, she's got her whole life together. Gail has also been on shows like uh, Chicago PD, Atlanta, Detroiters. And at the time of this recording, we're getting ready to experience her in the stars hit Pea Valley. Gail, you know, she's from, she's from Georgia, you know, so we connect there. We have that, that ATL route, but you know, she has also a great story of determination and persistence distance and faith and belief in herself. And I think she's going to shake your spirit in the best possible way. What I loved most about our conversation was just how rooted, hearing how rooted she was in her faith and in her, like connecting to her ancestors and those who came before her and paved the way. The reason why I'm doing this series is because success leaves clues. And I want you to know that you're not alone in this journey. And it's just nice to hear people just speak straight, no chaser, be transparent, be raw. So I hope you, you take these nuggets and um, if you enjoy it for sure, make sure you, you know, you reach out to her, you reach out to me and let us know what you thought about it and what your takeaways were. So get ready, get your snack, get your beverage and enjoy this interview with Gail Bean. Oh, Gail Bean is here. Gail, y'all, yeah. Gail is busy. We busy. So coordinating these schedules is something serious, but you all are in for a treat. Welcome back to Booking Magnet Magic. I'm here again with Gail Bean. We have had the pleasure recently to work together on Snowfall, though we're not in any scenes together. Season we five. were in one scene together in season four. In season four. Two, two scenes. But this season, Wanda's character, the character of Wanda, she's busy doing her own thing. on on her come up. <laughs> yeah, but I will. I must say, I really loved when I saw you in the scene with your son. That was a different side. They're starting to make Black women multidimensional. And we get yeah. to see them in different facets of life. So we saw your hustle job. We yeah. saw your strip job. We saw you as a hit girl. We yep. see you as a mother. And I felt like that, when you said, uh-uh, not today, I got my kids. Right. <laughs> we, that, that, I was like, oh, they onto something. Like yeah. now the world is waking up and seeing Black women well-rounded as also a mother, as also a hit person, as also I got to survive and I'm dancing. So yeah, praises to you. Yes, thank you. I was very happy about that also. I really was. And in vice versa, seeing your character I mean, your character has evolved over the years um, and we can get into that. But before we even get to all of that, how did Gail Bean even get started being an actor in entertainment? Where are you from? Give us give us that root story, that origin okay. story. So I'm from Stone Mountain, Georgia. It's not Atlanta. And as a little kid, I wasn't a child actor. I was my mom just allowed me to be a child. You know, so I did everything from swimming to cheerleading to track to ballet. And then just in no at normal schools, how you have your Thanksgiving play, your Christmas play, you may have a little church play. I was just involved. So my mother allowed me to be a child and experience that freedom and help me develop my own confidence in who I am, which I thoroughly think is is a necessity for anybody who wants yeah. to be in this industry. It wasn't until my senior year in high school where I took a drama theater class where I said, oh, I love this. Oh, like on another level, like <laughs> I want to do this as a career. Right. And then, of course, my mom's a high school teacher. So she was like, no, nah, you got to go to college. And I thought I was going to graduate high school, move to L.A., be a phenomenal actress. And she was like, no, you're going to go to college and you're going to get a degree in something you can get a job in, which... Now, in retrospect, I'm extremely, extremely grateful for. I played Delta. I cheered. I let my. I met a lot of my friends who now introduced me to other people who are still my support system. I learned a lot there and was able to because I grew up in an all black environment. It was nice that I went to a PWI because I learned how to twerk any room. I learned how to still be confident in myself and stand my ground around 
whomever, regardless of the race, the ethnicity, the sexual gender, the sexual preference, like I've learned to be true to who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful because even though I was not a theater major at Valdosta, I made sure that I took voice and diction. You Mm -hmm. know, I made sure I took speech and public communication. These certain classes where I knew it would pour into what I wanted to do, the bigger picture. I was an accounting, I was a double major accounting and finance because I said, I want to own my own production company. I want to be able to shoot films and television shows and have a whole theater play running and know how to handle my finances. Because, you know, when you first start out, you the accountant, you the assistant, you're (laughs) everything. So knowing how to be all those roles. So then when I do reach a level of success where I can put someone in that position, I can still eyeball it. Because, you know, the big thing about, you know, the balls and the Selena's is they have someone that's stealing from them because they don't know. And they just trust somebody over their finances. No, I need you. My accountant will tell you. I tell them to send me everything, communicate by everything. I look through line by line and we're going to discuss it. If it is one thing that I feel is off, I'm like, hey. Let's talk about this. I need you to explain. I need you to figure something out. So you don't put yourself in a situation where you're taken advantage of. Right. I don't care how much money I'm making. I don't even want a person to steal 50 cents from me. Okay. Period. Period. So exactly. So uh, what got me first started was just that love that I allowed to continue to fuel me, even though it was a dream deferred. So even while I was in college, because in college, I didn't do any acting classes. I was not a theater major, like I said, but I still knew all of this is for me. All of this will contribute to my my end goal. So then when I did move back to Atlanta and I did start to pursue and take classes, it was like, okay, this is the route I'm going. This is, I I know I'm I'm serious about it. I got in a, a major class that was Um, it was a branch off of New York, Susan Bassett Studios, and they took us to New York. She encouraged us to go to LA. So when August 2013 came, I said, yeah, I'm moving to LA. And I I made the leap. Did not know the first thing about what I was doing, but I trusted God. And I Mm -hmm. said, this is my passion. I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm going to read. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to attend the classes. I'm going to get the headshots and do everything I need to grow and get better each day. Mm -hmm. I love that. And y'all heard, do the work, do the things, not sit at home and wait to be discovered. I didn't hear that as part of your strategy. No way. The the wait and hope plan that some people can be on. (laughs) I think that was like, even my first go go around in LA, it was like, I'm talented. Like I've been on Broadway. Hello. I was like, oh, there's, oh, there's more I need to be doing. Okay. Okay. People like you who need to tell, because if you don't, if they don't tell you, you won't know. Our mm-hmm. teacher told us, like, look, no matter, I don't care if your resume is stacked in Atlanta. When you get to LA, you're nothing. You're at the bottom of the barrel. You start, you're starting over. They're yep. not respecting nothing. No. Nope. So I went with that mindset, like, okay, I've done theater. I've done traveling theater plays. I've done this. I had a movie, but I'm starting at the bottom. Yeah. And you just got to eat that, y'all. You just got to eat it. And no matter what market you are going to, I, oftentimes I coach a lot of actors who are, you know, grown. And it's like, I don't want to start over. I don't care if it's New York, Toronto, LA, or Atlanta. People think I'll just go to Atlanta. Atlanta ain't easy either. Atlanta is filled with talent. You it's still filled have to, with talent. You know? So it's like, I used to live in Atlanta a long time. That's where my credit started. So I'm like, don't sleep on, on Atlanta talent. You think you're just going to pop in and it's all good. No. So when you were growing up, like you said, you didn't really pursue it till later, but you know, were you into like movies, plays? Like what were some of the things that you used to love watching when you were younger? Like who was, what were t- some of the types of shows and what kind of, who were some of the artists that made you like lean in? So my artists are, I, I have an old soul and I, I respect talent. I respect craft. I respect theater. So my artists are like Ruby D, mm. Alice, Cicely Tyson, yes. like, Sydney Poitier, like Denzel, like my my artistry, the people who I, that's why I love Angelou Ellis because oh. she gives me that Angela Bassett. All they of give it. that. They give, they, they're, they're giving what it's supposed to give, which is the work. You know, mm-hmm. at the at the end of the day, it's 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 grinding, it's a self-belief, it's doing it regardless of the accolades or the praise that you may receive, regardless of I don't care if I got one line. 
or if I got 700 lines. I need to come with the same energy. I need to be equally proud about it. I need to give it my all and not, you know, not BS it. So, yeah. so those, those were some of the people who I just admired growing up. Um, Debbie Allen, Felicia mm-hmm. Rashad. Those are the women and the men that, that I look up to always. Forrest Whitaker, mm-hmm. you know, just it's, it's the grind. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I feel like I have an answer for myself, but with the names you mentioned, because I'm right there with you, what would you think, what do you think now, especially in your older brain, is the through line that connects all of them? Theater. Mm. Theater. I, I, I honestly, I respect every actor because at the end of the day, it's a brave thing to do to get on stage and, and tell someone else's story to, mm. you know, follow through on somebody else's words and lines. But I have a different respect for theater because there's that foundation of like living in the moment from truth to truth, mm-hmm. knowing that it is what you make it. Right. You're, you're, you're only as good as your weakest cast member, knowing mm-hmm. that it's a team effort, understanding that you're not doing it for the pay, but you're doing it for the love. Yes. So I theater, I feel is what connects artists on a different level for me for the ones who who I look up to it's yeah. the theater at, at essence black women in Hollywood Shante Adams mentioned how she came from the theater world how her mother and daddy came from the theater world so I'm not surprised right she's selling the way she is she came from theater mm-hmm. it gives you a different type of confidence it gives yeah. you a different type of trust it gives you a different type of thinking as an artist you know, yeah. so that I feel like the the people who I look up to, their connection is theater. Yeah, there's nothing, from. nothing replace, and that's how I got started. And nothing replaces that on site training. Exactly. Well, the line, well, fix fix it. The audience is there, right? Okay. It teaches you, like you said, it teaches you how to be a generous actor because someone else may drop a line, or you know, and. And how do you just roll with it? Roll with the energy of the audience. How does that fuel your performance also? You know, I think, and that just keeps you ready and kind of playful on set when you make that transition to film and TV. Yeah. I love that. You know, each, you know, the purpose of the show, y'all, is a reminder is to remind you that each and every one of us has something that is magnetic, magical about us. You know, I call myself the booking magnet because we are magnets. We attract everything into our life. Hell, Gail Bean is for sure a booking magnet because she stay working. But what would you say, Gail, you know for sure? It's like my Oprah, my Oprah moment. What do you know for sure? is your magical superpower. No one has to validate this for you. When you walk on a set, when people when you, people see your tapes and people are around you, what is that thing that you know only you uniquely bring to the table? My faith, my mm-hmm. authenticity and my personality. I'm, my intent is just to make everybody comfortable. Like, I don't have any other intent, any other when I, I want people to be happy. So I compliment people a lot because I want them to feel good about being themselves. I want them to feel comfortable about just who they are and with me. So mm-hmm. I think what I bring that a lot of people don't bring is I'm I'm here and I'm open and I'm literally here. Any person I come in contact with, I'm here for them. I'm not here with an intention of of anything for me, because I, I don't feel like my support and my blessings and that any of that comes from anybody. I, I honestly look to the ancestors and God to give it to me. Yeah. So I'm never walking in with an intention to get something from someone. You know, yeah, I set my intentions, but I set my intentions and send them to the ancestors and send them to God. And I think a lot of people don't. A lot of people do set intentions, but they set intentions of, oh, I want to go and this person must give me their number or their contact or um, Mm -hmm. acknowledge me or congratulate me. I don't go with that. I go with like, I just want to go and make other people feel good and feel loved. I want, and I think that resonates because it's genuine. Like it's not, this is, that's truly how I feel. I know to some people it may come off as fake, which I'm totally fine. I'm not going to be fake. You can't control that. You can't control how people receive it. Exactly. But I do think my because of the authenticity and the genuineness like I because of my faith 
Like I work so hard, I grind so hard, I do my research, I study, I go above and beyond because I'm like, I know, I know the ancestors and God gonna come through, so I gotta do my part. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, like I said, I, I'm I'm very open and receptive to whatever is given. You know, if it's given love, if it's given like cool, if it's not given that cool, I receive it, and now I know not to. Right, go there. <laughs> share space with you. Right. <laughs> like, sure. good, got it. Thank you, thank you for your, thank you for your authenticity. Thank you for letting me know how you really feel. Right, right. You know, so I think that's what, I think my personality and my faith just sets me apart a little bit differently because we have, and it's not to say with my faith, I don't have moments of of doubt and insecurity, but I'm grateful that I have people around me of when I'm, when I am doubting that they're me for me. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. And yeah, it's that kind of energy you feel before you say a word. Yeah. You know, even the first time I got to meet you, it's just, a, it's a warmth. It's a warmth. Yeah. I warmth. asked you guys for pictures. Right. Like I wanted y'all to know, like, I'm happy y'all are here. Like, yeah. thank God. Like you, you equally as important. I wanted y'all to feel like y'all, it's, y'all are the stars because you are. You see what I'm saying? And other people, they're in their head. They want to feel like a star. They want to make sure that they stay on the level they're on. So they don't they don't feel that they can share that light with anybody else. I know people love Wanda. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I didn't ask for that. But I but it's there and I'm grateful. But I want other people to know without you, there would this we couldn't do this without you. So that's why when y'all were there, I, I I asked you questions. I communicated with you. I wanted y'all to feel comfortable to do your best work and not feel like, oh, well, we acted on this show or with this person. No, no, no. You here. Take up space. Mm-hmm. Take up space. Yeah. And that's always, you know, for those of you who haven't had the chance to do so yet, that's always a unique moment when you are entering a family that already exists. You know, mm-hmm. I do a lot of guest starring. And so that's all. that's oftentimes where I'm, it's like hopping in, you know, I, of course I study the show. I make, I feel the energy and see where I fit in, see where my character fits into the world. But it is always very nice when the environment is welcoming, which, which I'm happy to say Snowfall is for me. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, the booking magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're gonna spend two days surrounded with actors just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. What job, what paid gig you have a long, beautiful resume, but what paid gig proved to you, I'm really good at this. Which gig was that for you? I don't think I'm there yet. Mm. I don't think I'm there yet. Okay. I think there's still, I think there's, I haven't done a gig yet where I've looked back and, and felt like I did. There's no other changes. There's no changes I would make. There's nothing I would like. I haven't looked back at anything in particular and been like, oh, that was perfect. Now I do smile. Do we ever, but do we ever get to perfect? I think art is always in motion. I think if we were to all look back at our gigs, there's always something we because you're you're getting better and better. True. Every day. Each job makes you better. I think. I think it comes with time. I think that you do when you reach a certain level, like Denzel says, I need three months. I think when you reach a certain level, you do get the proper time to truthfully prepare and do the research and hone a character before your first day on, you know, I think you do reach a a status in your career where you get the scripts well enough in in advance. You know, as a guest star, we know, you may get the script the day before. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they will, and you're like, so I don't even know what scene I'm shooting this week. If you could just let me know so I could rehearse so I could make sure I have the scene. Like I want, I do believe there will be a time where it's just like I'm able to receive everything that I've needed to process it. It's like theater. Now theater, I look back and been like, oh, I'm I'm good. <laughs> but yeah. with television and film, I haven't been awarded the 
And, and see, I'm not tripping because I'm not operating out of entitlement and ego, but I mm-hmm. do know there will come a day where I get stuff in enough advance to, right. to feel like, oh, I'm ready. Yeah. To really sit, to really sit in it. I, I overstand you. Yes. Cause yeah, I, so that's, I me, to- that's me. That's me. Email and production. Yeah. Okay. My call time. Okay. Yes. I get the call time, but what scene am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what scene am I doing? Me, even even with Snowfall, I'm still like, hey, can I get this? I still have to hit up Isaiah like, hey, have you got the script for this episode? Do you mind if I get it? Like, I'm still there. So I'm not, I haven't reached that point yet in my career where they feel where I'm a first thought. Where it's like, oh, hey, let's send this to Gail. So I, I do believe one day I'll get to the point where I am a first thought. To where everybody sends me all the materials I need to actually go out there and be great. And I'm not pulling a rabbit out my behind. And people are like, oh, that was phenomenal. Yes, but imagine what I could have did if right. I had this script three, four weeks ago. <laughs> so it's not the oh i'm landing in town boom wardrobe right testing boom tomorrow you work (laughs) but i will say i again and i know some people are watching wishing this was their issue and trust me i know things can sound like champagne problems now but Mm -hmm. everything keeps the bar keeps getting set higher and higher the more you go and grow um so i'm so tickled because i just this is my life also, and but I will, yeah, I'm not, it's, it's not an issue. I'm just letting people know the situation I'm in. Right. So I know I'm grateful for it, but because of that, I don't feel like I've, I've had the project where I'm like, you know what? You, you good. Like, yes, I receive accolades for Wanda, but there are moments where I look and I'm like, dang, I could have did if yeah. I would, if I would, like now as I'm growing and I meet more people, I did my research to learn about LA and the epidemic and, you know, off of family members. I'm going off of what I know, but I could have delved a little deeper to thoroughly know, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like, like to thoroughly know, but I do believe everything happens the way it's supposed to. So the project is going to come. And I wouldn't be surprised if God and ancestors don't bless me with a theater project where I get to develop and delve into that first right. again before taking me to a film or a television that is so gracious to, to bless me with all that information in advance. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You know, and like you said, it's like what's exciting about everything you just said is if I'm doing this with zero notice, imagine what that will look like. So we mm-hmm. get, we have more to, to, to look forward to with Gail. You know, I want to do, I want to transition a bit to the ebbs and flows. Every single person who's been on this show, we talk about it. Everyone has a different response, which, which I love. But the reality is even the, the one thing that is certain about the entertainment industry is that it will be uncertain. It will be ups, it will be downs. The, the the speed at which you work, everybody's path and journey is different, you know? So ebbs and flows could be, you know, work, 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 quiet, 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 work, work, quiet, quiet, right? You know, so over the years, you know, between balancing maybe side jobs or in between jobs or being quiet, then you're having an influx of work or it's down to you and one other person for a test and it goes to someone else. How does Gail deal with that ebb and flow and all that that emotional roller coaster of this industry for me it goes back to just my faith and belief in the ancestors and god is so strong to where i'm i pray and ask god on a daily for peace that surpasses all understanding so if i feel that i'm supposed to get it and i don't i pray for peace I'm like, okay, this, this must have not been for me. Like I had a project where I was cast in a show. Um, and the day before I shot, they recast me. They still had to pay me, but they recast me for a character. I mean, an actress who, to be honest, I'm not a fan of her work. She's not for me. I don't think she's a talented actress. I think she's extremely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I said, I pray for peace. I, I, I allow myself to go through the emotions because they are valid. I do not suppress my emotions. I give myself 24 hours to feel exactly how I feel. No common sense. 
So <laughs> I love the no common sense. Right? Yeah, I'm like, feel that, feel all of that. Right. It's I'm real. Like, oh my gosh, she's not even good. But then, you know, and then I go back. First, I go from the heart, and then I go back and I put it in the head. And I said, you know what? I'm grateful that a black actress is working. She, I don't think she's good. So she probably needed this. I will book more work. She may not. So I'm gonna get this is she need this. Obviously, it's for her. And mm-hmm. and I released it and I said, okay, God, I trust you. I mean, gratefully, I'm not hurting for money because you still finna have, they still finna have to pay me. And literally, I booked more work like soon after series regular straight to series not even that was just the pilot like it was a whole thing it was a whole thing so I have to uh, deal dealing with that you know it's a lot and I have to remind myself of the bigger picture so I don't allow the test and the auditions to become so big that they're larger than life so I keep my communication with my family and my friends because they keep me grounded they keep me in reality where this is still a job Right. You know, it's not your whole life. You enjoy it. You have a great time. You want it. But there's still bigger things going on other than that. So I think that's what keeps me grounded. That's what keeps me in it of like. At the end of the day, you have I have 17 nieces and nephews, so it's pictures. Oh, with them. On, 17. <laughs> it's the support and the love for my friends and family, for my significant other that reminds me like, you're going to be all right. You're going to be okay. They're not, your family and your friends don't love you because you're an actress. They love you because you, you, because you're alive, because you exist. So that just keeps me going on and not getting bogged down in, in the, in the glory, the praise or, or the put down. You know, yeah. I'm not, my acting teacher told me a long time ago, if you live by the praise, you're going to die by the praise. That's true. That's true. So I can't, I can't be so beholding to my wins because if that's the case, then the losses are going to be detrimental, you know? And I need to keep in mind that it's not me. It's bigger than me. Like there's a bigger, I, if I feel like, oh, okay, these folks said yes and I booked because of me. Then that means when they say no, I'm going to be like, oh, this was because of me. There's something wrong with me. Instead of knowing that there's a higher power, it's bigger than me. It's a, it's so many things that go into a no. Right. So I have to understand that there's multiple things that go into a yes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to book some things strictly off the fact that of my personality. Not yeah. even have nothing to do with my talent. But I have to understand that I'm also going to not book things strictly off my personality. Right. Like that, that it's not that I don't have a good personality, but maybe they really rock with somebody else's personality. Maybe they, that's their friend and mm-hmm. that's okay because there will be times where I win because I have a friend in yeah. the production. Yeah. I always like to say we are, we are chosen because of who we are, not in spite of, you know, mm-hmm. so we all have something like you just, I always, I always like to say, look, sometimes casting or production, they want a crispy apple, but you are a juicy orange. Yes. Both are delicious, very tasty, but that's just not what they need to move for. Yes. And that's okay. And that is okay. It doesn't make that juicy orange bad. Um, I love that. And thank you for being honest. And I'm, I'm adding that to my, <laughs> my box. Yeah. One day, no common sense. <laughs> No comment. No, I need that. I need that. Like, I don't even want to, you know, you have moments where you don't want to hear ration. Right. (laughs) You want to feel how you feel. But no, that's honest. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners and viewers can relate because I would never, especially on this show, no, no guest have I had yet has been like, oh, I mean, no, everybody has responded differently. But what's what's the same through line is I allow myself to feel. And how can we not? We're we're artists. That's like what we get paid to do, like tap into our emotions. So how can we pretend that it just doesn't affect us? Like exactly. we can, you know, a lot have it and then use it, use it later, use that pain that hurt for later. And I love how you say, then I just, pr- I pray for peace. If yes. Peace is not here. I pray for it. And yes. I love that because whatever you seek is seeking you. So if you pray for peace, if you're seeking peace, peace will come. Yes. One last thing before we go, this, I was, this is so juicy. Oh, so juicy all these conversations have been good i just been so blessed talking <laughs> to so many artists because no one's really having this kind of conversation we focus on oh what are you filming next so blah 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 which is great exactly. 
we have our PR. We yes, give you a reflection of you. We reflect what we give out. Yeah. So you're giving out the the real instead of just the you're giving out layers, you know, mm -hmm. instead of just the topical. Oh, this. Oh, I'm booking this. The topical LA industry conversations. You are receiving what you're giving, which is layered and deep and full. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. Yes. With that la last thing, I want you to hold in your mind's eye. Okay. The seasoned actor, 15 plus years in the game, and maybe they just hit a lull and they're just feeling like, man, maybe my time is done. Maybe I should just throw in a towel. Then I also want you to hold in your mind's eye the young, vibrant, excited new artists who just don't feel like they're getting a breakthrough quick enough. They're seeing everybody working and they're starting to doubt themselves also. Maybe I'm kidding myself. Maybe the same for me. What word of encouragement, what if you were gonna give them a virtual hug, something just for them to hold on to, what would you pour into them right now? That there is a script being written for you alone. Your time is coming. There is a reason for everything. Trust the process and enjoy the journey. Enjoy life. Do not put, how can I say this? The industry doesn't have the last say. You have the last say. You decide when it's over. You decide if it went what it's worth. Decide what your is going to be. So do not allow this industry or anybody in it to be the author of your story. Good. I hope y'all chew on that. Just sit with that. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Oh, Gail, thank you so much. I'm just, that just, that's good. Yeah. That's why this work, no matter what field of work you're in, everything starts within. Mm -hmm. Checking within what you want, what your desires are. Just because this has been your life up until now does not mean this is where it ends. You can live your life by design. Just got to think about what it is that you want and and know and have going back to what you're talking about, Gail, is that faith. Yes. Having faith and seeing that bigger picture. Yeah. They don't yeah. get the last say. I love that. Y'all, I'm going to put Gail's bio links to the things of course you can catch her on snowfall you can catch her on the new season of p valley and all i'll just have her connect so you can follow her her journey on social and everything gail bean thank you for saying yes thank you for sharing your love and your life you. with thank my community i'm so grateful for you thank you thank you have an amazing and beautiful day Yes, and thank you all for watching Booking Magnet Magic. Make sure you continue to watch this series and get your life because it's just so juicy. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.